So let's look at one more rule in probability. It's called the multiplication rule. I like it when uh, I like to view this as kind of like a sequence of events. What's the probability of happening when this and this and this happen? I call that a sequence of events. It's the multiplication rule or the AND rule. Probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B occurring, given that we know A already occurred. It's a sequence of two events. Now, if the events are independent, then I don't have to worry about this given, uh, this conditional probability. It's just the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay? And so we look at some examples. Here are, again, basic, or basic, uh, kind of not real world, that's what I meant, kind of just using marbles and picking things so you have at least a visual of it. And so the probability of picking red first and green second is equal to three sevenths times four six because three out of seven and then after you pick one marble without replacement we only have six marbles left and four of those are red sorry are green and so it's four out of six and so you get 12 out of 42. now if you do with replacement that means that we are going to put the marble back in place this will be a sense of in deep, uh, a scenario where it's the events are independent the probability of getting a red first is 3 out of 7, and a green second is 4 out of 7. We put the marble back in, so notice we end up with a different answer. One where we have dependence, right? We do not replace it, so there's a dependency. The first one affects the outcome of the second. In this case, the first one does not affect the outcome of the second, so that's why we have 3 sevenths over 4 sevenths. So, it's important to recognize, again, we have these sequence of events, and we want to think about are these events dependent or independent of each other, which came back to this conversation over here on the previous uh, lesson or the previous examples. And then lastly, we talk about this independence in another context, is whenever we are um, going to be uh, sampling without replacement, right, we end up with this Without replacement, we end up with this dependency, right? And we end up with having to change the uh, the uh, calculations because the one's dependent upon the other. However, if your sample size, when we're sampling, is less than 5% of the population, we can pretend with we're just sampling with replacement. It simplifies all of our calculations. And we have a quick check. You can check to see if sample size is less than 5%. Just divide the sample size by the population size. If it's less than 5%, then we can assume we can assume independence and just multiply these probabilities. So here's one last example here. Can we use the 5% rule? 5% of 1,000 is 50. We are sampling 2. We're sampling 40. So we can use independence the independence rule just multiply even though we are doing it without replacement very important here two of the subjects out of the thousand are um, without replacement find the probability they're both false positives well false positive means they're telling you you're sick when you're not sick or this is a drug user you're um, telling you're not a drug user but you're saying you are right you're not and they say you are that's 90 out of a thousand because this all totals a thousand outcomes times 90 out of 1,000, right? Even though you're drawing on two people, because the population, the sample size is so small, we can assume independence. And so we end up with that multiplication there. And the same thing with 40, just 90 over 1,000 raised to the power of 40. We're just going to assume independence. We don't have to do 90 over 1,000. You don't have to do uh, times 89 over 999 times and so forth. We can uh, assume independence because the samples are less than 5% of the population.